Alright, so today is another vlog vlog about instruments. Today features another member of St. John's Salema. This is James and his tenor sax. He'll be talking about some history of the sax, history of his coming to and playing the saxophone, as well as some um, playing some tunes and whatnot. So here we go. Hey, I'm James Nelson. I'm a saxophonist and occasional bass player for St. John's Salema. Uh, today I'm going to talk a little bit about my saxophone. To begin with, I'll talk a little, about a little bit of history. Uh, the saxophone was first invented by Adolf Sax in the 1840s. He was a clarinet inventor who wanted to make an instrument that was more precise, a little bit easier to play, and had a different tonal color. Um, although it wasn't, didn't really catch on in the 1840s, uh, it did eventually find a place in some uh, orchestral arrangements, although it never became an orchestral instrument. Um, it, when it really gained popularity at the beginning of the 20th century, uh, in the 1920s in particular, um, that was considered the, the saxophone craze at the time. And that's the time when a lot of the improvements to the saxophone were made. Um, and it's kind of the way uh, that it became modernized and became known as the instrument today. And uh, just in, style, in terms of styles of music as well, the 1920s were the jazz age. Uh, that was where a lot of jazz got started. Um, and then eventually the saxophone started to be used in um, big band arrangements and then in bebop and now in rock and roll and so forth. Um, and now today there's even dubstep arrangements of saxophone pieces. All right, so now I wanna just show you a little bit about the, the parts of the saxophone. So first I'm gonna start with the mouthpiece. I'm gonna take that off. Um, the mouthpiece contains three parts. The first, is the mouthpiece itself. Um, they, they can be made out of different, a variety of different materials. This one's made out of hard rubber. There are a lot that are made out of metal. Uh, the cheap ones are made out of plastic. Some are made out of wood. But the hard rubber tends to be the, one of the most popular and it's good for jazz or classical music. The second part is the reed. The reed, uh, they come in different sizes. As you can see, they're tapered off like that. Um, the different thicknesses are uh, used to get a different kind of sound or different tonal color. Um, as you know, saxophonists and horn players in general, or woodwind players in general, tend to buy reeds uh, usually every month. Um, they usually come in packs of five or ten, and usually you, you buy them and you have to kind of test them out and then kind of sand off the edges and kind of, you know, doctor them up and, and make them to your liking. Uh, this one's a three. This is kind of like a medium size. They usually start from one and a half and then go up to five, size five. And then this last part is called the ligature. And all this really does is it, it holds the reed onto the mouthpiece like that. And it has a little knob here you can turn to tighten it. So that's the mouthpiece. The next part is the neck. This is a tenor saxophone. This is the the third, kind of the third of, of the four saxophones that are common. The, the first being the soprano, the second the alto, the tenor, and then the baritone is a larger size. This kind of has a, what I call like the goose neck. That's a, one way to, to tell a tenor saxophone apart from an alto saxophone. Uh, and it, you can see that's the cork here, and this is where the mouthpiece will go on. Next is the body. This is the last part. The body is where really everything is. Um, you have the bell here, uh, you have the pads, uh, each of these kind of, they look like buttons, they, they have a pad underneath, I don't know if you can see it, um, but they all have pads, you might be able to see it here. Each, each one has an orange pad, and these pads seal the, the, the pad cups, I think that's where they're called, the pad cups to the, to the edge so that no air will leak. Um, so now I'll just go and there's the keys here. Uh, you can see the pearl, mother of pearl. That's where you put your fingers. Um, there's a place for um, your index, middle, and ring fingers. And then you have a place for your pinky here on the right hand. And then you have a place 
uh, here for your pinky. And then you also have what are called the palm keys. These are used for the higher notes. Um, you have the octave key. It's used by the left thumb. And we have the right thumb just holds it in place. And this, mine, this is an older horn. It actually has a, an adjustable feature, which is really neat. And then on the right hand, there's also a few auxiliary keys. Um, this is a another, an, this is an alternate fingering key, and these three this, this, these three keys um, they're they're used by the side of your hand. So I want to talk a little about a little bit about my horn in particular. Um, my horn is a it's an older horn. It's a vintage horn. It's from the 50s. I believe it's 1952. It's um, from the Martin Company. It's called the Martin Tenor. It's a little bit hard to see, but you might be able to see it on the bell. Um, it's a little bit tarnished, uh, but I kind of like the look, honestly. Um, and one of the ways you can tell older horns apart from newer horns is that the bell keys will be on the left side rather than the right. Most modern horns have the bell keys on the right. Uh, and then another, one other way to tell older horns apart from newer horns is that older horns, uh, they're not as ergonomic or they're not as ergonomically comfortable, which means that the, the fingering uh, and, and the keys aren't as comfortable to play. Um, and, and this varies from horn to horn. Uh, there's a company, uh, Con, old, old Con horns were very notoriously, they were, they were notoriously known for being very difficult to play. But uh, one of the ways to tell is that um, the mother of pearls kind of line up. I'm not sure if you can see it, but they, they kind of line up so that your, your fingers are kind of like parallel to, to each other. Uh, newer horns tend to, to move, to slide them over a little bit. So a newer horn might uh, have the mother of pearls, you know, slid over so it's a more natural grip. Uh, and then another, the octave key is a little bit different. Um, the octave keys now tend to come down further and make it, to make it a little bit easier to use your thumb to press it. One of the things that got me into playing the saxophone was the wide variety of tonal colors and sounds that could be played on the saxophone. Um, so I'll, I'll just demonstrate a few. I've always been a fan of a more darker, um, smooth sound, which is more characteristic of some jazz, some like older jazz. Um, so I'll play a little bit. saxophone is the amount of styles of music you can play on the saxophone. Um, not that you can't play other styles on, like, it's not that you can't play rock and roll on the violin or, uh, or funk on clarinet, it's just that it doesn't really sound right. The saxophone has had a history, a uh, very varied and, and, and uh, broad history that has allowed it to kind of be a, you know, a key figure in a lot of different musical genres. Um, so I'll play a few. First, first I'll play kind of a, a quasi-classical, because I'm not really up to date on my classical playing uh, piece or uh, example. <laughs> piece or a classical style might sound like on the saxophone. Now I'll play like a like a slow ballad, like one of my favorite things to play. <laughs> Mm 
general styles you can play. And there's, there's a lot of different styles that I didn't uh, sample. But um, yeah, that's one of the things I like about the saxophone. It's a very versatile instrument. You can play in um, symphony orchestras sometimes if there's a, a piece or something that has been arranged. Or you can play in concert bands and jazz bands and big bands, uh, rock, rock bands, rock combos, funk groups. Um, so yeah, that's one of the great things about the saxophone. It's versatile. You'll always have a job somewhere uh, playing something, whether it be classical pieces or you know top forty music too. So, so I began playing the saxophone in fourth grade band. I actually started on the alto saxophone. I still play alto saxophone about as much as I play tenor. Uh, I also play clarinet too, but that's a different story. Um, but yeah, I started in fourth grade and I really loved playing. I think I was like one of the most advanced students. Not I'm not bragging. I mean, it's not really a big achievement to be a great fourth grade saxophone player, but I remember really enjoying it. I remember we used to come home every day and play saxophone. But uh, after fourth grade, I started uh, becoming a cyber charter school, so I, I did my school work at home. So I didn't really take any lessons for a while. So from fifth to eighth grade, or fifth to seventh, I didn't play saxophone at all. But then in eighth grade, I started playing, I started taking private lessons again, and I started to really get into saxophone again. And, all through high school, I played a lot. I played in uh, the school jazz band, high school jazz band, um, marching band. I played in uh, a youth orchestra, and I still help out with them from time to time. Um, but now I, you know, I play for St. John's Dilemma, and it's one of the best things I've ever done. It's a fun band to play in. Um, and it's fun to, to play sax parts and to come up with horn arrangements and so forth. So, and now I, you know, I don't have as much time to play, but I, anytime I get the chance, I grab the horn. I also play with the Encore's big band from time to time on alto, second alto. So if you're ever in the area and uh, you have, you see that the Encore's are playing, I might be there, so. <laughs> just how logical the saxophone is, unlike some instruments. You know, I recently had a conversation with a, a trombone player who was very, so deluded as to think that the trombone was a better instrument, or an, easy, an instrument that is easier to play than saxophone. So, you know, I, of course you wouldn't listen, but yeah, just, just for, for, for demonstration's sake, I mean, the saxophone, uh, it's, it's very simple in that, you know, you lift a finger and you get another note. It's just it's that easy, and it, it, it makes it easy to play fast, it makes it easy to play 16th note runs. Um, you know, for like, so if I'm gonna play a C major scale, I would start like this, and lift a finger each time, and there you go. And you can play fast that way. You don't have to be worrying about a slide, you don't have to worry about getting in the right position, you don't have to worry about being out of tune, you, you just, you can do it. And you can do that for any scale. I mean, trombones can't do that, can they? I want to see them try. Yeah. 
Okay. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed all of that. I've got another one coming up next week with uh, Mike from St. John's Salama playing the trombone and discussing it. But that is all for today, so like, subscribe, follow my other social media, and have a good day. Thank you. The jury's in. I mean, the saxophone is just a, a logical instrument.